we're a leader in our industry, so we want to do do what's right right now for our broader community. The way we chose to do that was donating 100% of the profits of all of our Playmate coolers sold on our website to the CDC Foundation, which was able to secure personal protective equipment fastest and get it to the places in most need for frontline healthcare workers. So put our community on on alert that we can actually do something yep. to help save lives. Hey everyone, on this episode of e-commerce deep dive, I speak with Brian Garofalo, VP of marketing and e-commerce for Igloo Coolers. Igloo recently stood up a really interesting marketing campaign in response to COVID. They referenced uh, some of the kind of legacy iconography of their their classic Playmate cooler. Um, he goes through the the entire story of, of how they rolled it out, how they got it to market extremely quickly. I think you'll get a lot out of it. It was really a, a unique conversation. Uh, and uh, here you go. All right, Brian, welcome to the show. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So it'd be great just to hear a little bit uh, about your background, what you're up to uh, today, and then we can kind of uh, roll into it. Sure thing. Uh, so I've been a, a in consumer goods marketing for almost 20 years, uh, and it's mostly been in the action sports industry, which is skateboarding, surfing, snowboarding. So spent most of my career uh, influencing young consumers to go buy cool products. Uh, sure. And I grew up doing all those things, so it was really following your passion. Uh, thought a lot of things were were broken around that industry, um, so I ended up going to chase a dream and started a, uh, a technology company, a mobile app called YoShirt that allowed people to customize apparel designs and accessories, and we built an on-demand supply chain to go manufacture and deliver those. Um, exited from that company and then spent a little time consulting, and as luck would have it, I got the coolest job in the world. Uh, and now I'm the vice president of marketing and e-commerce for Igloo Coolers. Awesome. How long have you been with uh, Igloo? Uh, so not too long, just about 18 months now. Okay. Awesome. That's great. So, um, you know, I know one of the things that we wanted to, to talk about today was um, uh, kind of a really interesting uh, kind of super quick pivot you guys did uh, in terms of a, a marketing strategy due to, to COVID. Um, Want to just kind of give us the highlights and then maybe we can dive into that a little bit more. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so I, I use this one all the time. One of my favorite quotes from our uh, great philosopher of our time, Mike Tyson, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Yep. Uh, so big lose seasonal business. Uh, we put a lot of resource into spring in the northern hemisphere so we're sitting here with uh, a lot of money on the line people's time effort a lot of uh, uh, a lot of time wrapped up in strategy and planning we're right about to hit the execution button and COVID shows up sure. uh, so tear up all our plans throw them out the window and now our priorities shift from uh building brand and creating commerce to one, we need to preserve the health and wellness of our employees. Uh, we want to keep everybody employed, uh, gainfully employed as long as we can. Sure. Uh, we're a leader in our industry. So we want to do, do what's right right now for our broader community yeah. uh, and then maintain solvency of the, of the company. So the way we chose to do that was, uh, donating 100% of the profits of all of our Playmate coolers sold on our website uh, to the CDC Foundation, which was able to secure personal protective equipment um, fastest and get it to the places in most need for frontline healthcare workers. So put our community on, on alert that we can actually do something yep. to help save lives. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how did you actually execute this? How did you go about doing it? Um, in a very scrappy way and very fast. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how long have we been in this now? 10 weeks. So, I mean, yeah. how, 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 when, when did you start? When did you decide? Was it kind of that middle of March time period? Yep. Uh, we were, uh, we were tail end of second week of March. Uh, yep. our CEO gave the challenge to our marketing and e-com teams. Um, with uh, just the plans that I laid out. So a uh, fairly broad concept and what sure. were we gonna do? How are we gonna do it? Uh, we landed on the promotion. We knew we wanted to make uh, make the right, uh, the right decision about who we 
support, find the right partner about how to go get that executed. And then we really wanted to amplify our Playmate coolers um, where that's the, the key product that, uh, that we knew can make an emotional connection with our, our consumers. We do a lot of licensing and a lot of fun graphics. Got it. Uh, so the, the actual idea to execution took us three days. And wow. we were we were online selling coolers with New Creative um, and a partnership with the CDC Foundation in in three days. Now the the caveat there is that was our uh, our own exclusive designs and colorways. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a little little longer lead time to go reach out to all of our incredible partners we do licensing with, uh, where we need their approval for any New Creative. Um, so everybody from uh, Lucas and Disney uh, to um, the Grateful Dead uh, and uh, you know Warner Brothers Media Properties, lots and lots and lots of depth and breadth of partners that we work with, and sure. every single one of them wholeheartedly said, "Absolutely, we want to do this," and uh, really sped up their standard approval processes with the sense of urgency to get out and help our broader community. Hey everyone, John Giorso here. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. I wanted to let you know that this episode has been brought to you by Orca Pacific, the agency I founded to help brands succeed on the Amazon platform. If you need any services that relate to success on the platform, whether it be content, advertising, SEO, help on the back end when it comes to operational support, et cetera, or even just some advice on a place you may be stuck, feel free to reach out to our team. The best way to get in touch with us is on LinkedIn. And with that, we'll get back to the show. So when you first started, I assume you started with your own website, direct to consumer, probably that was the the most straightforward place of kind of making this pivot. Um, Did you expand it beyond that to other retail partners, other online channels? So we did, um, and it was by no design of our own. Uh, So we, we kind of backed into a real, um, a real windfall where uh, we had a lot of great support from our consumers. So a lot of consumer generated content sharing on social media that they were, uh, they were ecstatic about what we were doing. You know, we, we did a lot of the small things, right? So we put a thank you note in every outbound order that said, thank you for the support. This is where your purchases profit is going. Um, You're part of the solution, not the problem. Um, And people were taking pictures of their cooler with the note and the sticker pack and saying, you know, they, they feel great about this. Um, Got picked up by lots of great media outlets, um, you know, blogs and blue chip press and, and a lot of uh, uh, local broadcast stations. Uh, and a lot of our retailers noticed. Um, now of course, we share this internally with uh, our sales group and our buyers. Uh, but long story short is a couple of our retail partners said, how can we help? Um, and now we're, we're actually extending this partnership to um, Walmart stores. And uh, $2 from the purchase of every one of these coolers inside several thousand Walmart stores will be going to the CDC Foundation. That's uh, awesome. The other story that I like is, isn't necessarily a distribution channel, but it was part of uh, our uh, our actual overall promotion. Um, so a, a chef, Ryan Fay, that we work with, he's part of a, a celebrity duo, the Grill Dads. They work with, um, they work with Guy Fieri. Uh, mm-hmm. They let us know that he was doing a similar project spearheading for the Restaurant Employees Relief Fund. Yep, I've uh, heard about that. Yeah, we obviously have, um, you know, huge support from um, the catering community and small individual restaurants. Um, All those people are hurting so much more than most. Um, So we had the ability to reach out to Guy, do a partnership with him, bring a cooler to market in just a matter of a couple weeks with, uh, with his intellectual property on it. He promoted it and we were able to, to generate $30,000 $30,000 in, in donations in uh, just a couple weeks with uh, with that project as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, going back, you, you mentioned uh, something about the emotional connection uh, to the Playmate Cooler. Can you just talk more about that? Sure, absolutely. So um, Igloo invented the category yeah. uh, and has a lot of really cool stuff within the history of Igloo 
and tied to the history of America. Sure. Uh, back in the 60s, the U.S. Highway Transportation Act passes. 10,000 miles of, of interstate highways are built. And now you can get to you know, Aunt Thelma's house three states over with your car. And there's not a lot of infrastructure built in between where you are and where you want to go. Yeah, no, no gas stations and restaurants yet, right, on, on the side of the freeway. Yep. And at the same time, Igloo invents the world's first plastic ice chest. And now you can go take that road trip. So it's almost, you know, instrumental in, in something that's so American, you know, the yeah. concept of the road trip. So people look in their garages and see their 20, 30, 40 year old Igloo cooler. And it immediately brings back a memory. Uh, yeah. And chances are it's a positive one because if you're using yeah. a cooler, you're, trying to go have a good time yeah, you're doing something fun uh, yeah and and igloo had lost a little bit of that in the last uh last couple decades uh, not a lot of innovation not a lot of consumer marketing uh so our uh our job currently in the marketing communications team is to rebuild that emotional connection and make people want to buy igloo specifically because of um you know, a, a style, a shape, a graphic, a licensed partner, um, and really put a smile on their face and be excited about a purchase. Very cool. And did you use some of that nostalgia in, in I mean, have you used that historically with, with Playmate? Was that a new thing with this kind of new, um, uh, you know, promotion you're doing or, or um, have you always kind of had that, had that going? Yep. So absolutely. Um, we've, we've used that in lots of different communication channels, mostly in social media. Um, so consistently week over week, we dip into our archives and pull out, uh, pull out old content, um, uh, where we have permission, um, and we have authority to be able to do that because we've been around for 75 years. Sure. So some of our just iconic pictures we have with the brand when yeah. we, when we take out a picture, uh, you know, from the, from the seventies of a, uh, you know, a couple under a waterfall in Hawaii holding an igloo playmate cooler. And it has that look about it and it's shot yeah. on film and you can't help but feel some kind of way. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's uh, something incredible that we have the ability to do. Uh, but what I'm really excited about is, is the future and being able to tell that story as well. So next year, uh, 2021 is actually the 50 year anniversary of the invention of the Playmate cooler. So we'll be telling that story in a big way through the entire year. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, from a more practical standpoint, you said a lot of, you know, a lot of retailers really kind of saw the buzz, leaned into this initiative. Um, anything specific you were doing for, for e-commerce or digital channels that, that kind of went maybe above and beyond or just was, uh, was different than traditional retail? Yep, absolutely. So this, uh, this entire promotion was, uh, concepted and executed exclusively for e-commerce and not wow. just e-commerce, but our own direct to consumer channel, sure. coolers.com. And, you know, the reason we did that is all the reasons that people like us love e-commerce. Uh, yeah. It's incredibly fast. You can be incredibly agile. You can have the direct connection to your consumer. Um, and then the data that drives all of your decision-making is available at your fingertips. So we had, um, we had a couple ideas of what we wanted to do. Um, one of them worked really, really well. A couple of them, uh, were just flat out bad ideas, but that's part of our, our company culture is we like to, we like to fail fast, try, try a lot of stuff and get it out there. Um, so when we, when we did this promotion, um, we, we did a, a big sprint to go from concept to execution of idea with creative and then tested every single channel that we possibly could and looked at the data. Um, we, have, we have some distinct advantages where um, our e-commerce business is, uh, is exclusively in the U.S. Um, so we have a, uh, a finite amount of time that we can drive a ton of traffic through and only have to worry about three time zones and say, okay, we've got statistical significance that this is going to work or it's not going to work and which channels will and go double down on the ones that do. Got it. Interesting. So 
you know, you mentioned social, you mentioned there was just kind of a lot of organic PR, um, earned media. Were you using paid media in a major way to, to help support this? Or were you relying more on kind of the, the, the buzziness, organic nature of the idea? Yep, absolutely. We definitely uh, use some paid tactics as well. Um, I think you, you know, whole, I, I look at uh, paid acquisition as a way to um, test theories very, very fast. So if we're talking about prospecting and new customer acquisition, yeah. um, you know, there's there's no better way than, than Facebook uh, to get out there and target the people you want, buy the traffic to come to your site and test everything. Sure. Uh, so that's also the fastest way to guarantee you can get the message into the right people's hands. So we definitely had a um, you know crossing paths on a graph of uh, where we invested our resource over time. So we started heavily with paid social um, and allowed our other organic channels to ramp up. Got it. So yep. um, you know we've got lots of PR that happens, but that happens on somebody else's schedule. We've got sure. lots of user generated content, but that happens on somebody else's schedule. There's a ton of word of mouth, but that only escalates over time. Yep. As far as those ramped up, um, that allows us to uh, rely a whole lot less on paid channels. Got it. So basically you, you use paid as sort of the catalyst for the message. And then it sounds like to do some testing and refine the messaging. And then ultimately, I assume, did you actually scale that back as, as the, the earned stuff kind of ramped up? Uh, so yes and no. <laughs> um, we had a, uh, we had a, uh, a finite amount of time that we focused heavily on prospecting. Yep. Um, over time, when we were gaining tons of new traffic from other channels, uh, then we really switched that, uh, that paid channel from heavy prospecting to heavy remarketing. Um, and the, the spend didn't necessarily go up or down, uh, but the return and the amount of, uh, of our revenue per that channel certainly shrank. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Makes sense. Good. It, you know, anything else that, that you think is, would be interesting to kind of an e-commerce focused audience around the story? I think it's, it's, it's super cool in terms of how quickly you guys were able to, to react to this in a positive way. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I hope I'm not stepping out of turn here, but uh, naming somebody else at an agency uh, just said something really poignant to me the other day, Taylor Holiday at uh, Common Thread Collective. Sure. Uh, so he, he mentioned that uh, some of his clients had incredible success through uh, through the, the COVID-19 response. Um, and a lot of them fell flat on their face. Uh, and the difference between one or the other had nothing to do with optimization and who is the best at managing tactics. It had everything to do with the creative yeah. and the creative is all about what is the right offer for the right brand to give the right audience at the right time. Um, and is it authentic? So if we just went out and said, Hey, a lot of you are, are hurting financially. So take 50% off everything on our website. You're just running a sale. Exactly. Right. And there's a good chance that we would have had zero revenue. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we took a good look in the mirror and said, why are we here and what can we do that's meaningful? Um, our audience responded. I like to think we executed fairly well and our growth was off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, that term authenticity gets thrown around a lot and, you know, I think sometimes maybe overused, but, um, but I also think it's important and, you know, customers are savvy. They can, they can sniff out real quick when, when something is coming from, you know, not kind of a good, a good faith motive or when you're trying to polish something, you know, that isn't really, uh, uh, you know, what it seems to be. So I think the idea of, of just a very simple message around 100% of the profits go here. Like there's no, you can't spin that. Right. You know, I mean, I think that, that those sort of bold messages tend to break through. Clearly, it, it did for you guys. Um, yeah, certainly, I, I, I agree. So there's an element of faith that our customers have to have in that as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, you have you to know, trust you, right? To, yeah, we're able to show reporting and we're yeah. able to show here's exactly how much uh, went where. So, uh, you know, we like to think that we were able to, you know, hold up the trophy together with our audience at the end of this promotion. Uh, but I think to your point, in, in addition to authenticity, you know, the other thing that's incredibly important is speed. 
So when we're talking about response to a certain topic, we've got to do it fast. Um, that's something else that I've, I've talked to a, a few people in the space with as well is, you know, it's now too late to do a, a COVID-19 response promotion. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think in, in general, absolutely it is. Uh, because then it doesn't seem very authentic, but there's still very much of, um, you know, opportunity out there, but it's gotta be topical. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny just, you know, from a personal perspective, like how quickly I became sort of cynical and immune to the, the COVID themed commercials on TV. Oh yeah. And and it's it's different because they're not, a lot of these companies are not really actually doing anything. They're just changing their messaging you know, right. trying to seem sort of more oh, we care about you, but there, there's no actual, ch- no change, but, um, yeah, three but, you know, ago it was by a Toyota and now exactly. You see the first couple and you go, Oh, that's poignant. That's kind of cool. And then by like the fourth time you, you see one of these, you're just going, yeah, okay. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm already, I'm past that point. I'm already cynical. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenge to, to create a message, create an initiative like that, that, that is truly authentic and kind of at the, the right place in the right time as well. Um, it, it, anything else, you know, anything else that you, that you think any, anything that surprised you about this? Uh, well, this, this was, uh, this was something we'd never done before. So sure. I, I don't want to say it was a surprise. I would say the result was, was certainly, something that made us incredibly happy, yeah. but we figured it was either going to work or not work. Um, and our, our position was, well, we have to do something. And we, uh, we went all in, we got an early read that, that it was working. Um, so that just made us work harder and double yeah. down and, and try and grind out, um, as much success as we could to go help the greater cause. Yeah. And it really felt like, you know, it was such a sprint that 45 days went by and we, turned around and went, Oh my gosh, can't believe how much ground we just covered. Um, and got a, got a great feeling about it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so where do you go from here? I mean, how, how do you, you know, how do you, obviously retail's probably not going to be a great spot for the foreseeable future. Um, I mean, what are you guys doing? Are you pivoting more to, to digital? Or are you, um, you know, trying to kind of just focus more on the brand uh, and then kind of hit the gas pedal again once we come out of it? What, what's the, you know, what's, what's the next 12 months look like for you guys? Sure. Uh, so certainly our, our uh, direct consumer channels growing like crazy across the board. So uh, Amazon, wholesale.coms, uh, vertical native e-tail, uh, doing our best job to optimize all those channels. So the yep. standard blocking and tackling of of e-commerce, right? Uh, Putting more resource against that. Um, You know, so uh, overall as a company, um, you know, taking resource that might've gone into uh, some wholesale channels and putting it into e-commerce currently. Yep. Um, Outside of that, uh, changing messaging, of course. Yeah. So, you know, as I mentioned, spring comes and, and we're ready guns blazing to go have a, have a big spring kickoff. And then we had to tear those plans up and throw them out the window. Well, uh, now it is all about messaging. Uh, so we're, we're in a unique position where the product we make is actually really beneficial for, um, for the, the consumer mindset right now. So less huge summer extravagant uh, vacations and more staycations, close to home sure. adventures, road trips, backyard social distancing. Yeah. Uh, so we need to tailor our messaging to that. Uh, yeah. Again, going back to that emotional connection. Sure. Um, giving the right product to the right consumer at the right time and then trying to put a smile on people's faces. So yeah. if, uh, Oh, here you go. It's a great example. If somebody can go to a friend's house and, you know, take the red and white Playmate cooler here or yeah. take the mystery machine. I like it. I like it. Yep. Yeah. You get to walk into your friend's backyard and, and, uh, and be a hit and put, uh, put a little bit of sunshine in, uh, in some people's lives. It's a good feeling. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. I think that that's, it, that's very practical too. I mean, I think, you know, creative can get very lofty and I think that's, that can be really important and really, you know, think about human emotions and all those things. But at some point, you know, someone's, uh, 
probably not using a cooler to go to a concert, but they may be using a cooler to hang out in their backyard with their friends. So like, how do you just very practically quickly pivot messaging and, and, you know, make sure that they go, Oh yeah, I, that does make sense. I am going to do that. A cooler would be, would be helpful. Yep. So exactly. Yeah. Do it, do it in an authentic voice, uh, the right thing for the right consumer and, and, uh, don't try and oversell this. We're not changing the world with a, uh, with a cooler, but we're certainly solving a, a problem at a, specific moment in time. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, Brian, anything else you think our audience would, would benefit from knowing? Uh, that's a good one. I mean, there's a lot of things people would benefit from. I don't know if I'm the one to give them the news. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, how, how do, uh, you know, how do people get in touch with you? If you want them to get in touch with you, how do they learn more about this initiative? Uh, you know, if they just, if they want to buy a cooler, or if they want to kind of hear more about the story behind it. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so definitely encourage anybody to go to igloocoolers.com. Um, we've, we've pivoted out of this promotion and into a uh, Memorial day activity uh, cool. that'll be happening for the next 96 hours. Um, and then you'll see a lot of uh, that staycation and, and close to home adventure content from us. Uh, personally, if they want to reach out and hear a little bit more about, uh, about the story, uh, usually LinkedIn is the easy way to get a hold of me. Cool. Uh, Ryan Garofalo, I'm sure you'll uh, be able to put a link in the I will in the content. Yep, awesome. Hey Brian, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for uh, being on. You got it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to another episode of E-commerce Deep Dive. I hope you got a lot of value out of it. If you did, make sure to go in and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You can do that on your favorite podcast platform or on YouTube. And if you get a chance, leave us a review while you're at it. It would really help out a lot. Thanks, and we'll talk soon.